This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. And in this video, we are going to take a look at the some of the parameters we have to control the physics of our rigid body object. And what I have here is my scene that uh, was that we set up in the previous video, just doing an introduction to R RBD objects. And uh, the the place where we find the parameters that allow us to adjust dynamics that are related to the objects in the scene are in the Autodop network. So if I double click on that and come in here, I can select my RBD object. And in its parameter list, we have two tabs that we would use for controlling the dynamics. We have the initial state tab and the physical tab. In the initial state tab, we can actually set a, an initial position or rotation for this object so I could rotate it 90 degrees. Now my object's not rotating because I just realized that I have my time indicator out here at frame 56 so I need to rewind back to the beginning and now I see it's rotated 90 degrees down. So whether you do that rotation here or up at the geometry level is again somewhat of personal preference but it, it would it would basically give us the same results so uh, I don't want to rotate it down, so I'll set that back to zero. But in terms of simulation, the two important parameters here in the initial states tab are the velocity and angular velocity. So these velocity will give us a pulse to push the object in a certain direction. So for instance, if I'm pointing down the z-axis here, I could go to velocity and add something like five to the velocity. And now the character gets pushed forward a little bit uh, as it as it falls um, and our angular velocity here uh, is spin so if I wanted the if I want to try to make the character do a front flip before it hits the ground I'm gonna to want to spin it on the x-axis so that would be the first parameter here and I have to give it a pretty hefty value I'm gonna try something like 600 and let's see what that does there we go we got almost a spin and a half before the character hit the ground. So uh, I'll, I'll leave the character that way and maybe I'll give it a little bit of forward pulse also on velocity like I did before. But instead of five, I'll go with something smaller like maybe three, just to add some variation in there. And some other parameters that we have are the in the physical tab. Um, there's quite a few in here. The main ones we want to be aware of would be bounce and friction. So we can increase the bounce. You notice when the character hits the ground, it doesn't really bounce much. So I can increase that bounce amount. I'll add it or increase it up to one. And now it bounces quite a bit more. And if I wanted to further uh, add bounce, I could do it at the ground plane level as well. The ground plane node also has a physical tab and in here we have bounce and friction. Uh, the one thing we want to be careful of though is we don't want our bounce coefficients, I guess they would be called, <laughs> between uh, the object, the rigid body object and the ground plane, we don't want them to go above one. Uh, if I set the ground planes bounce to one and my rigid body objects bounce is set to one, the object should oh, I probably shouldn't have had it spin because that's that's um, shedding off quite a bit of bounce <laughs> but uh, if we set those bounce coefficients both at one that means we're at two so two or higher will typically make the object gain energy as it bounces which could be for create an interesting effect but it's not really uh, accurate uh, as we would see it in in the uh, real world so those are just a few of the, the primary attributes or parameters we want to be aware of for our rigid body objects and our ground plane that can help us craft or tailor the, the performance of our simulation a little bit better.